we we start. Yes, we are recording now. Thank you. I'm activating uh, silent some microphones uh, so you can put on again when you you need to 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 talk. Okay. So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for participating in one more one or more sessions of our webinar series Babel Tower Museum People in Dialogue. Today we are honored to have here the president of ICON Alberto Garlandini and the president of ECOFOM ICON uh, Bruno Brulon uh, and also some representatives of the Cimeto Velho Eco Museum in Italy some students from uh, museology in Quebec and some students from museology and art history and archaeology here in uh, Liège, Belgium. Um, for today, we will not read the rules as um, you know, since most of you already participate of other um, other sessions, so we only kindly ask you to silent your microphones and be aware that we are recording. The videos will be uh, are being prepared to our YouTube channel. Over the course of almost three months of intense, in, intense activity, we have seen over 30 presentations. We had over uh, 220 registrants from 2,000 countries in, on four continents. We met the communication uh, challenge as best we could. We managed the, the communication challenge as best we could without imposing a single language and trying to be as inclusive as possible in situations where people were not fluent in the working language of a specific session. This webinar series was, uh, was conceived by Giuse Papalardo and myself, both as part of her mission as visitor, visiting scholar uh, researcher at the University of Liège's Muse uh, Museology Service and her interest around eco museums, urbanism, environmental justice, and transdisciplinarity. And as part of my course, an elective course I teach here entitled Museology Seminar Insurgent Museums and Museologies. Jose Papalardo's mission is sponsored with a grant from the European so Social Fund within the framework of the project Researches, attra Attraction and International Mobility. After the realization of the series of webinars, the launch of our YouTube channel uh, will, with the translated videos and the publication of an article together, we will work for the pub publication of the proceedings of the Babel, uh, Babel Tower a webinar and create a, and to create a network for the ones interested in, in maintaining contact with the uh, Babel Tower community. In addition to my museology seminar, these activities are also part of a research project called Insurgent Museologies Transnational Exchanges, which is part of the strategic plan of the research unity Art, Archaeology and Heritage, Axis, People, Spaces and Territories. The, this research project is interested in the new subjects of museology of our time, called here in a generic way, the insurgent museologies. These tendencies or trends have emerged in different contexts of insurrec insurrection questioning the established and traditional model of museum with a rather militant and out-of-the-box profile. But we also consider the efforts of some agents who work from the so-called classical museums and museological theory to transform them. The idea is not to establish and define a new jargon, but to facilitate the interpenetration of discussions and networks that are sometimes enclosed geographically or by scientific field, and to disseminate 
inspiring idea and practices. These webinars would, would not be possible without Ig de Vahin having put Juicy in contact with me. Other things are still required. The understanding of the students of the seminar course that allowed us to open a large part of their course at the Babel Tower community. The scientific committee composed by Gilsey Papalardo and Martina Barceloni Corte, a colleague in the um, architecture college here in Liège, and the group of master's students and doctoral, uh, doctoral candidates, PhD candidates, uh, who formed the organizing committee of the series. Obe Albitar, Pauline Duhé, Julia Gulli, Megan Fassan, Alix Nissen, Edouard Nzoyeha, Océane Mest, Florian Paquet, Camille of Sumer, and Lea Di Francisco. Today, museology acquires new contours from emerging subjects in the world of museums and heritage, and the demand for symmetrical and decolonial epistemologies. The pandemic has taken us to think of preservation in a much more integrated way, not of objects and treasures from a colonialist and accumulative mentality, but of humanity, humanity itself and of the exhausted planet. The history of museum is very much linked to the human desire to last forever and to control and consume everything that sur surrounds us. But reality shows us that there is no future in this way and that the well-being of all living things is much more interconnected than individualism might advocate. One of the greatest contemporary philosophers, Ailton Krenak, a Brazilian indigenous leader, bring us to a reflection on preservation that museology cannot longer avoid, on pain of ensuring the posterity of collections for a future without human beings. I will share an um, image here with you to you have access to his words. One minute. Um, oops, sorry. This. The idea of a, the integrated museum of Santiago do Chile is more and more urgent. I leave you with this, his words. It is terrible what is happening, but society must understand that we are not the salt of the earth. We must abandon anthropocentrism. There is a lot of life beyond us. Biodiversity does not miss us. On the contrary, from childhood, we learn that there are lists of endangered species. As this list grow, humans proliferate, destroying forests, rivers, and animals. We are worse than COVID-19. This package called humanity is absolutely detaching itself from the, this organism called Earth living in an abstraction of civilization that suppresses diversity, denies the plurality of life forms, existence and habits. I pass now uh, the words for Jose Papalardo, who will conduct the works for this afternoon here in Belgium and morning in America. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for these inspiring words, Manuelina. Good morning and afternoon to everybody. And um, today, uh, so we close this first cycle of exploration that we have conducted through the Babel Tower. And um, so we have done a series of debate, exploration and reflection, but now we are enthusiastically open to further developments of these transnational and transdisciplinary exchanges. 
And for this reason, all the inscribed people to the series will continue receiving some updates from us and hopefully other invitations in order to keep these dialogues alive. And first, as, uh, as you know, we have repeated that many times, uh, we have announced the launch of the YouTube channel by the end of April uh, that stored all the uh, recorded webinars. Um, so we have, we have already uploaded almost all the videos that have been recorded. It's a very rich um, set of videos that you can already look at that. You have to uh, search for Museology U Legend. You will find the past um, webinars recorded. Uh, we are still in the process of inserting the subtitles. Um, it's still a work in progress. Sorry for that. We, uh, you probably have to wait some uh, weeks more in order to have the complete subtitle. It has been a bit challenging, um, but in any case, uh, you can already see uh, the diversity of the webinars that we have uh, that we have done. Uh, you... There is a microphone on. Okay. You... Okay. So um, before starting, I also want to um, thank all the people that Manuelina has just mentioned and have uh, warmly welcomed me and supported in developing this research mission, uh, albeit in this virtual uh, asset due to the current pandemic crisis. Uh, so again, thank you to the um, organizing committee for the hard job of transcribing and translating all the webinars, as well as for keeping this series very vibrant. And uh, as Manuelina has just said, my exchange program has been sponsored by the Social Fund, European Social Fund, through the Italian project called uh, Ponaim Attraction and International Mobility, that is aimed at fostering networking activities at the international level between the researchers and their institutions, specifically targeting um, those researchers based in European regions where local development is lagging behind, such as the region of Sicily is. And um, in a while, you will hear something more about that, as today we have the pleasure of having here some fellow citizens of mine that are working on the ground in order to try to improve the development condition of our region. And uh, But before uh, giving the floor to Alberto and uh, Bruno, that I thank uh, for being here, and before leaving the floor to the other people that will share the expli the, their experience, my task today is to give you an overview of what we have discussed and discovered so far during the Babel Tower series. Um, and so um, let me start with that, and then I will leave the floor, as I said, to the president of ICOM, Alberto Garlandini, the chair of ICOFOM, Bruno Brulon, and also, as I was saying, my fellow citizens that are here, Cettina Santagati, who is assistant professor of drawing at the Department of Civil Engineering and Architecture of, the, of my university, who will share the experience of, uh, um, uh, of how of, so uh, challenges and uh, uh, perspectives related with a um, university museum called Mura um, with the active engagement of the students. So in a while I'll also leave the floor to Cettina and then we also have as I was saying before Vincenza Bonanno and Valentina del Campo that will talk on behalf of the participatory presidium of the Simeto River Agreement that together with Giuseppe Reina that is also here um, today uh, together with me and together with other uh, passionate people from the Simeto River Valley, uh, we're trying to foster an ecomuseal process on a distress area of Sicily, and um, you will hear something about that later. So, before uh, leaving the floor to our uh, guests of today, um, let me tell you something about what we have discovered during this webinar series and the, that will be the base of our conversation today. 
Um, so the first webinar, um, it has been dedicated to focusing the general idea behind the, the series. As we have said many times, the, the aim of this series has been to dig into intersection between disciplines, specifically between museologies and regional planning, that is the disciplinary field where I work. And uh, beyond transdisciplinarity, we have also opened up a discussion toward various transnational exchanges. And the broad question behind this empirical research has been how to identify how people relate with the tangible and tangible signs of their past in order to plan a more just and inclusive future in times of ecological transition and societal changes. This has been the main topic that we have proposed to the various speakers, and then each speaker had given a contribution based on this very general um, question, opening question. So the first webinar has been dedicated to introducing and also to introducing the debate on eco museum. We had Giuseppe Reina that uh, and with him we started focusing on eco museums as territorial living and evolving laboratories. Um, so we focus how not only they are aiming to inventorying, documenting and preserving heritage and the landscape, but also at sharing and, and creatively enhancing local development um, projected toward experimental and exchange and innovation through the continuous redefinition of action and relations between individual, collective subjects and institutions. And the same day, uh, I gave an example of an eco museum. Again, I talk about what we are doing in the Cimento River Valley. And then we also had Guido Caruba, a young uh, person who shared with us uh, mm, uh, some reflections uh, and some perspective as a young person that sees windows of opportunities related with the ecomuseal process for distress contexts such as the Cimento River Valley. And during the debate, we highlighted the importance of pushing practices like ecomuseums in, dist in, uh, in distressed contexts, again, as windows of opportunities for those communities. In the second webinar, we moved from Italy to Spain and Kenya in order to discuss the concept of insurgent museologies through practical examples, which are context-based and plural. So we had Oscar Navajas Corral, who offered a brief tour of Spanish geography, where it is possible to find truly enriching initiatives that have contributed uh, to a communal and democratic practice in appropriation of heritage through eco-museums. Um, so he has recalled many pioneering experience, experiences in community participation that has produced awareness, raising, um, um, raising awareness and has produced social cohesion. Uh, and so he recalled experiences such as the Cultural Park of Maestrasgo in Aragon, um, the Eco Museum of Rio, Gaizena in Andalusia, and um, others uh, such as La Ponte Eco Museum in the north, the Centro Social Heredia in the south, etc. Um, and so all these experiences can be positioned as social museological initiatives based on a strong militant and democratic character. And then the same day, we also had Edward Zoyera that present its analysis as part of his doctoral research on the current um, uh, situation of museums in East Africa uh, on decolonization of Western system of museums. He, um, he has focused on political and social function of such museums in Kenya and in the process of restructuring and reappropriating colonial heritage and community museum and how community museums participate in this process of decolonization. Um, so he gave some example. We have um, also raised some critical aspects that emerged during the debate, uh, such the risk of propaganda. And then Edouard concluded pointing out the social and political functions of these museums in the search for unity and pacification. In the third webinar, we had two very diverse, but in a certain sense, complementary presentations. On one side, we hosted Mike Robinson, that is full professor of cultural heritage at the University of Birmingham and director of the Iron Bridge International Institute for Cultural Heritage that is the Europe's largest independent museum. 
He gave a very provocative presentation titled Breaking Out the Museum, Radical Rethinking Value. He showed some examples around the world and through this example, he pointed out how museums change depending on what societies and communities value, argue that sometimes it takes time for an object to become appreciated. Uh, for example, he talked about the Iron Bridge. Today, there is a sense of pride on being the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution and the first mass production of iron. But of course, um, 300 years ago, it was different. And now people are pride to be the custodians of what he called a national slug collection. And uh, he concluded with a reflection, the necessity of recalibration, how societies actually engage and use museums, particularly in the face of very rapid social and cultural change and economic pressure. And the question he, lead, he leaves us with, is how these changes affect what we actually value in the world, how to create not just physical space, but also intellectual areas of reflection for the new thing that we value. And that was the uh, open question he lived us with. And the same day we had an, another presentation focused again on eco-museums. We had Orla Breslin um, that shared with us her experience in being the local operation coordinator in the creator in the creation of the Ireland's first eco museum in rural, rural South Kerry. And so she gave some details on the genesis of this process that started five years ago, and it is aimed at fostering long term environmental and educational tourism. Um, and the core of the approach she shared with us is the co-production of knowledge and projects that is easy to say, but unfortunately very difficult to apply, as we have discussed that day, uh, also in times of uh, social distancing and the pandemic crisis uh, we are going through. Then, uh, during the fourth and the fifth webinar, uh, we hosted twice Obey Albitar and Andre de la Plas. Obey uh, started recalling the book of Nina Simone of 2010 that is called the Participatory Museum, and he gave the example of migration museums in Brussels as an example of a participatory museum, which is his actual uh, is uh, current focus of research. Uh, so he talked a bit about the migration museum in Brussels that opened. Um, couple of years ago in 2019, and it has been created by a non-profit organization and offers a permanent place for stories of first generation of immigrants with a collection that is constantly renewed every six or eight months. So again, with a participatory approach, and we focus some um, key points and limitation also of this approach. And then Andrea presented her dissertation, uh, whose goal has been to highlight the representation of Immigration in permanent exhibition, um, and she gave. Um, she has studied three examples: uh, the Ellis Island Migration Museum in New York, the National Museum of History um, of Immigration in Paris, and the third museum is Museum of Immigration in São Paulo, Brazil. São Paulo, Brazil. And she focused on the third one, um, uh, pointing out some characteristics of this museum and how important um, is to ask how spaces of representation stage the history of immigration. Uh, we reflected upon the importance. Uh, um, it is not of just um, a matter of how communities share their personal story and their personal objects also uh, the object of memory, how are they presented in this exhibition alongside with the local, national, international history. So she gave some refl critical reflection on the relationship between how objects are related with uh, this different level of history. And then uh, the same day, still remaining in Sao Paulo, Brazil, um, we also had Gabriel Aidar, who coordinates the inclusive educational program at the Education Department of Pinacoteca um, of San, in Sao Paulo in Brazil. 
um, and she has discussed some challenges and opportunities related with developing socially engaged practices in traditional museums. Um, uh, so uh, she has uh, um, talked about their educational program that includes groups of homeless people, incarcerated people, children from school, fragile people carrying physical and mental disabilities, etc. So she has shown the type of activities that that museum is carrying out with these people and she pointed out oh, how um, activative inclusive museological practices in traditional institutions is a challenge due to the rigid organizational structure and logics of operation and power within the more traditional museums, but it is worthwhile to try. And so she uh, showed us what type of activities they are uh, carrying out there. Uh, the sixth webinar was more focused on territory and local development. We hosted a landscape architect called Tim Schovecker uh, with an interest for landscape history with the purpose of generating specification for habitat restoration and ecological design. So in his presentation, he highlighted the role and importance of historical maps, historical surveys, documents, and their use in ecological design. And this set of information, he pointed out, it is very useful today for management and restoration of um, ecosystems such as river basins. Um, as an example, team explained the engaged research is carrying out in the Catalpa Basin in Mississippi, working with local farmers, using this set of historical information as means for generating new restoration projects. And as such, team has shown as this particular type of heritage, that is historical surveys and maps, can be used for ecological design processes today with involvement of local actors. Then we had Catherine Lambert Pennington, associate professor in the Department of Anthropology at the University of Memphis and the director of the School of Urban Affairs and Public Policy. She presented a reflection based on her research in suburban Sydney, where she lived and conducted an ethnographic research in La Perouse. Her presentation proposed to trace the relationship between place and identity and how this connection can help us understand what she calls restorative attachment. The idea of restorative at attachment refers to the human eco-solidarity in which identity, place and becoming shape representations of, connection, of connections using a particular space the resources of that space and allows to see the potential in the context of a post-colonial um, space, like in that case, Australia. And finally, that day, we also had Donatella Murtas, an independent research that has been devoted to eco-museums and local development project with a special focus on landscape heritage interpretation and community involvement uh, at, uh, at the national and at the international level. Uh, so she uh, she has been part of the first uh, eco museum laboratory working uh, um, uh, within the Piedmont region in Italy, uh, and she's also the developer and the coordinator of the Eco Museo dei Terrazzamenti della Vita, whose experience she has presented. And reflecting on her experience and on the meaning of cultural heritage, she pointed out how important it is to rethink, to reconstruct the meaning of places and of life, stressing the importance importance of concepts like trust and credibility as the base of eco-museums. And that day, Mart Martina Barcelloni-Corte coordinated the debate and she discussed um, this presentation pointing out um, that uh, all these concepts are even more urgent today with climate change and ecological fragility. And then we had the seventh webinar, the for us was a very special one as we had the honor to present the Italian version of recent Yves de Varin's book, uh, Le Comusee Singulier et Pluriel. And this webinar has been co-organized with the Italian Network of Eco Museums and uh, the editor of the Italian version, Cooperativa Utopia Concrete. And Alberto Garlandini, Raul Del Santo, Maurizio Tondo, Donatella Murtas introduced um, with words of acknowledge um, the work and then Giuseppe Reina 
posed some questions that came out of a meeting conducted early um, in early March by the Italian network of eco museums that after a critical reading of the chapter of the book dedicated to Italian eco museums has collectively collectively decided the questions uh, topics discussed topics were uh, very various and diverse uh, the relation between Italian regional laws and the system of funding transversality of eco museums as actor of integrated development relationship between eco museums and museums uh, relationship bet between eco museum and landscape and landscape planning in the framework of the european landscape convention the role of regional and national network eco museums and tourism self-evaluation and self-sustainability of the process um, Ig Devarin gave his comments highlighting uh, um, some key points, uh, some lesson, of course, uh, summarizing is very complicated and you, you, are, you are all invited to uh, watch the video on YouTube because it was a very dense conversation. Anyway, he, uh, on one side, he pointed out the importance of uh, economic independence of eco museums from uh, regional political assets, specifying the transversal character of eco museums, uh, even if the administrative office Offices are organized not in a transversal way. And so he stressed out the, he stressed the importance of people that create transversality beyond the administrative boundaries. He also pointed out the differences between eco-museums eco and museums, having the latter ones a collection to manage that the first ones do not have, having a territory to, uh, to know and manage collectively. Uh, in terms of networking, Devarin recalls the importance, um, the important experience of Mondi Locali, um, and he po pointed out how important it is to keep um, networks alive, uh, also with a certain degree of informality in them. Regarding tourism, Devarin has been uh, mm, uh, very clear, uh, specifying that uh, uh, the tourism related with Eco Museum is more a proximity, let's say, a proximity tourism, a community-based tourism. It is not mass tourism. And um, mm, this is a way for creating community relations based on hospitality. Uh, in terms of self-evaluation and self-sustainability, he advised how each eco museum has to find its way and tools, uh, such as the community map, Mappa di Comunità, he recalled many times in Italian, Mappa di Comunità, which has been an interesting tool that has been developed by Italian eco museums. Uh, important not just for um, uh, producing a system of common knowledge, but also uh, for um, producing a system of common projects and also as a, as a self-evaluation tool. And then he continued talking with students. And again, it was a very rich afternoon and you will find it recorded on YouTube like other webinars. So in the eighth webinar, we had the honor of having Claudio Torres and Susana Gomez, who shared the experience of Campo Archeolo Archeologico de Mertola. Um, the project started 40 years ago in order to create a path of development in the poorest and most remote Portuguese region. And this project was aimed to let this exceptional site to survive. And today it is an exceptional example that shows how community-based approach to archaeological excavation and to, in general, um, archaeology um, has become a real opportunity for local development. And after showing several examples, they explained that the idea has always been to make a harmonious management of heritage while at the same time doing research, con conservation, enhancement, enhancement of heritage and dissemination. And they pointed out how it's important to work with school community um, with, um, and also um, 
with various uh, uh, community members. Um, there is a project that they have recalled that is called Archaeologia para Todos, Archaeology for All, that brings the museum where people usually are. For example, um, they, look at, they have relocated archaeological remains in banks, hospital, town owned, etc. And uh, they uh, talk about several community meetings that they have conducted, uh, workshops with families. And I have to say that I found this experience really inspiring also for what we are doing out there in the Cimeto River Valley. Um, in the ninth webinar, we have explored several concepts, uh, such as expographic group tour with Dominique Chouigny. Dominique um, talked about four aspects to uh, represent the muse museology of group tour. Uh, he said that this is a traditional, traditional museology rethought. It is the need to overcome the impasse of ethnographic exhibition traditionally associated with the collection and their classification. It is making free use of scenography and available objects to be a theoretical reflection or a story. And then he said that the visitor um, of this type of exhibition have to leave the exhibition with some doubts about, about his knowledge, his beliefs and his judgment. Uh, we, we were placed Pleased to have Mario Moutinho, which, that is director of Lusophone University of Humanities and Technologies, and Judith Primo, that holds UNESCO chair on education, citizenship, and cultural diversity. Diversity. Um, they have talked about socio-museology. They define that a school of thought, an ongoing process, and so they have shared with us some um, the roots of uh, social museology related with education with a reference to the work of Paulo Freire and they define social museology as uh, um, it reflects a considerable, a considerable part of the effort to adapt museum structure to the constraints of contemporary society. Uh, they said social museology is constitutive of a disciplinary field of teaching, research and performance that favors the articulation of museology with social sciences and humanities. They gave some example of their ongoing work. Uh, they talk about coloniality as one of the aspects of modernity and which is at the center of the activity of uh, social museology, decolonization. And they explain some lines of action for social museology, also ad advising some interesting books to be uh, read, including uh, um, uh, even old books such as bag Bugs. Uh, Armando Perla presented this uh, intervention called uh, Museology of Human Rights or Dra Dra de la Person. Um, he questioned the current definition. Um, he critically questioned the current definition, said that he came out of the ivory, ivory tower and proposed another one saying that um, uh, museology of human right is a type of museology from below, a set of museum practices and corresponding body of theory that aim to further uh, human rights through the prioritization and participation of historically excluded people in all museum processes that directly affect them. And so he gave also some example um, between Canada and Brazil. And last Friday we had the last uh, webinar and we have discussed museums experiences in Belgium uh, um, in the Brussels area, thanks to Gladys Verkam Gragen, uh, in the Flanders, uh, thanks to Olga Van Oost, and in Vallonia, thanks to Kim Kappart. And with them, we have discussed concept of participation, polyphonic narratives, agonist museums, and power structures. Also, on March 26, there was a session closed to the public, but was open to the students and uh, students of, um, uh, from U the University of Liège, together with students from University of Quebec in Montreal, as uh, um, discussed um, uh, the, the process of um, public consultation related to the construction of the new ICOM definition of museum. And so the student, um, uh, th this session was led by Professor uh, Bergeron and the students had a brainstorming on the uh, new uh, definition of museums and uh, um, 
and, and I don't know if today some of them at the end want to add something related to what they have discussed during that session. So uh, having summarized this journey, as you see, was very intense and uh, very dense. Uh, now uh, I want to stop, of course, because I also maybe talk too much, and I want to leave the floor to Alberto Garlandini, who is the president of the International Council of Museum, ICOM International, former chair of ICOM Italy, uh, also president of Scientific Committee of Trento Museo delle Scienze, president of uh, Abbonamento Museo Association of Osta Valley, Lombardy and Piedmont, member of Board of Director of National Museum of Palazzo Ducale in Mantua, and of the Scientific Committee of Brescia Museo Foundation. He was the speaker of UNESCO's high-level forum on museums. Um, he gave and delivered several lectures at university and international conference, uh, and he has been uh, widely published in Italian, English, fr French, and Spanish. Thank you again, Al Alberto, for being here. Here. And also Bruno Brulon, I want to introduce them in a row so that then I will leave you the floor for uh, commenting um, the series. So Bruno Brulon is a museologist and anthropology based in Brazil, professor of museology at the Federal University of State of Rio de Janeiro and professor in the postgraduate program in museology and heritage, and co he coordinates the laboratory of experimental museology at this university, working closely with community-based museums and with several projects in the grassroots level involving cultural heritage and museums. Co currently, he is the chair of the ICOFOM, International Committee for Museology, and co chair of the Standing Committee for the Museum Definition, ICOM Define. Um, so, dear Alberto and Bruno, thank you again for being here. And I would like you to react on what we have said based on if you can find a fil rouge on what has been said and how what we have discussed um, is emerging in the debate inside your organization and committee. And I would like you to, um, to comment from your standpoint how this reflection can contribute to the broad debate related with the post pandemic world. Uh, what's the role of the type of museums and practices such as Eco Museum that we have discussed in this historical phase? Um, also, when we have constructed this program, we did not have any claim of exhaustivity. We were just starting a journey in order to map and trace practices of what uh, Manuelina has defined insurgent museologies. Um, I don't know if you would like to advise what important pieces we are missing and should incorporate into this uh, bubble tower conversation. And uh, feel free to add any comment or even criticism about what we have done. And uh, we are here for listening at you. So um, first, uh, Alberto, uh, the floor is yours and then uh, uh, Bruno. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Manuelina and Giusy, for your words introducing today's webinar. Well, let me start saying that uh, it has been a great privilege to be part of Bubble Tower. The webinars have given me and uh, all participants an incredible number of inputs, sparks, suggestions, reflections. Bubble Tower has been a unique journey through the multivalent, diverse, complex, changing and exciting world of museums and museology. This extraordinary journey started with Manuelina's uh, insurgent museologies and Judith's Eco Museums, continued with Hugues de Varin's community museums and community museology, and finished with Mauro, Mario Moutinho's social museology and many museums presenting their innovative experiences. Babel Tower has given us much food for thought. And in this conclusive webinar, I would like to point out to some keywords, some key concepts that in my opinion are at the core of this week's debate. Well, the first keyword I'd like to submit 
to your attention is change. Change. The world is changing. Communities are changing. The relations between countries and peoples are changing. The pandemic has accelerated global change. Museums and museology as well are relentlessly changing as part of the global transformation. As a global organization of museums and professionals, ICOM is actively debating the impact on museums of the challenges that our societies are facing. The crisis of traditional social identities, migration and inclusion, human rights and the fight against inequalities and racism, diversity and decolonization, urban regeneration, digital revolution, climate change, and last but not least, pandemics. Responding to the pressing requests of communities and authorities, museums are taking new social responsibilities as striving for a new, larger role in society. The core functions of museums are the conservation, exhibition, education, communication and promotion of collections. However, today's museums have also become communication hubs and places of intercultural dialogue, participation and inclusion. If we take a look at the resolutions approved by ICOM triennial assemblies and at the themes of the last International Museum Days, we see how museums' core functions have expanded. Milan's ICON 2016 Assembly highlighted the responsibilities of museums toward the tangible, intangible heritage conserved outside their walls, as well as towards the landscapes and heritage sites that surround them. At Kyoto's ICOM 2019 Assembly, ICOM and its 49,000 members recognized that museums have a crucial role, a crucial part in implementing the United Nations Agenda 2030 and in shaping a just, sustainable world. On Earth Day 2021, celebrated just a few days ago, ICOM joined the Global Coalition United for Biodiversity. Climate change and loss of biodiversity are urgent challenges. There is no time to waste, and museums are more and more active players in this United Nations call for action. When we look around, we see that museums are institutes of reconciliation and participation, as well as places for critical thought and pluralistic views. Bubble Tower presented many excellent examples of such involvement. In 2017, the International Museum Day discussed how museums deal with contested history and with what is considered unspeakable issues by most people. With the 2017 International Museum Day, ICOM highlighted how museums can help communities discuss and reconcile divisive memories of the past and of the present as well, such as segregationism, colonialism, slavery, civil wars, genocides. A second key concept that is a fil rouge in Bubble Tower is diversity. Diversity. The 2015 UNESCO recommendation on the social role of museums was the result of a successful partnership between ICOM and UNESCO. 
and significantly it points out to the protection and promotion of museums and to the protection and promotion of the diversity of museums. Diversity of museums. Recently, UNESCO estimated that there are 104,000 museums all over the world. Despite their great number, I think that it's not possible to find two identical museums. And if there were, one of them would be useless. Museums were born, have grown, have successfully responded to the needs of contexts marked by great social, economical, cultural, political, philosophical, religious diversity. Each museum has its own specific identity, its own specific history, its own specific mission. Their diversity is their strength, an exceptional treasure to preserve and promote. Bubble Tower has presented the experience of a great number of different, sometimes very different museums with diverse background, context, collections, dimension, and localization. Each of them is unique and important for the growth of museology and the growth of our professional community. While well, diversity is strictly connected with dialogue. Dialogue, a key word emphasized in the title of Bubble Tower as well. Culture, heritage, and museums promote bridges, dialogue, and peaceful relations between peoples and countries. ICOM's slogan, museums have no borders, they have networks, is paramount. Facing a world full of conflicts, museum and ICOM promote all forms of cooperation and dialogue about, among museums and museum professionals in every country, no matter, no matter their government's policies or their government's political, religious, or ideological approaches. In times of pandemic, lockdown, and isolation, we often felt lonely, personally and professionally. More than in the past, we now can understand the importance of professional and personal relations and networks. Facing great challenges, more than ever, we have now appreciated the value of exchange of experience and ideas, of co-production of knowledge and innovation. Global cooperation, intercultural dialogue are helping us to transform challenges and difficulties in drivers of innovation. Participation. Participation is another key word that, we, that I would like to highlight. 1972, UNESCO and ICOM Santiago de Chile Roundtable has been a cornerstone in the history of museology. Since then, eco museums and community museums have highlighted the crucial role of participation of communities to museum life, have provided new interpretations of heritage at the service of democratization and local development. Participation means providing access to cultural heritage and museums activities to all citizens with no discriminations. Free access to culture and cultural life is a recognized human right and a key indicator of equity and well-being. Bubble Tower's debate show how communities not only ask to be consulted or listened to, communities demand to be involved in, this, in decision making, content development, and definition of priorities. Thence comes the incomparable role of museums. 
I had the great pleasure to participate in Babel Tower webinar dedicated to the Italian translation of the last book by Hugues de Varin. On the basis of uh, on the basis of uh, Hugues' extraordinary contribution to museum and museology, we talk about eco museums and community museums, as well as uh, about the crucial role of heritage in enhancing the identity and diversity of communities and in promoting sustainable local development. When uh, Hugues talks about heritage, he refers more to the intangible and living heritage of communities than to their tangible heritage. But what I want to highlight here is the key concept of the role of museums in local development. The teachings of Hugues long-standing museological practice are now recognized even by traditional economies. In 2018, ICOM, a non-governmental cultural organization, and OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation Development, ICOM, and OECD is an intergovernmental economic association. Together, ICOM and OECD co-produced a guide for local administrators on maximizing the impact of museums and culture on local development. This uh, successful partnership is a proof of how Hugues' far-sighted theories and actions have become acknowledged opinions, not only in the museum and heritage community, but also in national and international governmental bodies. I would like to conclude my remarks remembering my visit to Japan a few years ago. A friend from a local museum took me to an astonishing traditional Shinto shrine. For over 1,000 years, the main wooden building of the shrine has been continuously rebuilt with the same technique and shape every 40, 50 years, using, of course, new materials. For over a millennium, the knowledge and practice of shrine reconstruction has been handed down from one generation to the other. And its identity and religious values have been preserved. The local community thinks that this knowledge and values are part of their heritage. Even if its building materials are recent, the shrine is undoubtedly part of their heritage. The Shinto shrine shall be considered on the same time part of the tangible, intangible, and living cultural heritage of the community. From my point of view, this example highlights that it is high time, high time to bridge conceptual and disciplinary chasms. We are living in a hybrid world where digital activities merge with face-to-face -face experience. A hybrid world where promotion and communication of tangible and intangible heritage should be as integrated as possible in order to reach the largest public. A world where museums are developing digitization, a new hybrid form of cultural experience and dissemination. More than ever, museums are melting pots of competencies, knowledge, disciplines, and professions. A sound spirit of cooperation, interaction, cross-fertilization is indispensable to improve the role of museum in society. Let me finish saying that in the last 18 months, our lives have been turned upside down. We are living difficult times. We are living difficult times. Each of Bubble Tower's events has been, has been a splendid occasion to breathe some pure air, to strengthen all the new friendships, to build up enthusiasm and trust in museums and in our wonderful professional commitments. Thanks again for the opportunity to join you in such an amazing and rewarding journey.
Thank you for your words. Uh, we will discuss later. Now the floor is to Bruno Brulon. Thank you, Juzi. I would like to, to start by congratulating you and Manuelina for this incredible series of events. I have been uh, trying to follow it in a distance and I think that it has really uh, shown how museology dialogue is an urgent matter and museological points of views um, really still need a lot of inter ex international exchange in order for us to achieve a common ground and to say that museology is actually um, a common disciplinary field or a branch of knowledge. But I would like to really address your question on what is the common ground here or the field huge uh, uh, from your incredible series of symposiums to say that um, I can only answer to this question looking to my own experience with ICOFOM, my, my committee, the committee that I am currently chair. But when I say my committee, it's not just because I'm chair, but because I have been working with ICOFOM for over 10 years now. And it's really um, a joy to have uh, be dealing with this kind of international debates in terms of museology and museum theory and practice. Um, noticing that the one thing that we can say about museums today and in the contemporary times, however we define it, is that we are, like Alberto already said, dealing with a great diversity of experiences and, and also a great diversity of social issues and political issues that are present in our time. So that said, I mean, one, one question that probably was the common ground for your, for your series of symposiums, but also a central question for ICOFOM is how can we reach a single disciplinary field or a single branch of knowledge that we call museology um, if we have such a great diversity of museums experiences to observe, to learn from and to debate. I think that's where the richness of museology lies, but it's also a methodological challenge for us who are uh, trying to study these specific uh, experiences from different parts of the world. So uh, first, uh, I have to say that it is an, ama an amazing effort that you put so many different people together to dialogue and also uh, you have managed to select several professionals and specialists and researchers from different, different, not only different geographical contexts and cultural contexts, but also uh, methodological perspectives or, or theoretical approaches to, to the question, what do we have in common after all? Um, so for me, this is the, the main point here. What do we have in common? How can we approach museology and have uh, common concepts, common methods and common theories to dialogue? That was the question that prob probably one could, can say that that was the question that founded ICOFOM in the 70s and that was present in this committee more directly in the 80s and the 90s. And definitely that's a question, um, as I know, as, as, as someone who has studied the history of ICOM, that's a question that was in the beginning of ICOM since the 1950s, when some found fundamental uh, concepts and notions were being defined by great theorists such as uh, Georges-Henri Rivière and Hugues de Varin, uh, who have been already, already quoted here and who have participated in one of your um, uh, meetings. So uh, this, we arrived, the 21st century is still with the need to define what we have in common and what methods and theories can we uh, use to analyze museums, what concepts we have to analyze museums and how can we define this concept, uh, which is a very huge debate, both theoretically, epistemologically, but also politically, as we have seen with the debate of the museum definition within ICOM. Um, I'm, I'm not really going to get into the, the details and I definitely don't have the answers for you, but I would like to approach this debate and try to provoke um, some sort of critical thinking about how museology has been developing in the world and the state of art of our different museums, um, considering what I have been calling when we look to the landscape of international museums and different kinds of museums in the world, uh, especially now during the pandemics, uh, we can definitely see what I have been calling museum marginality, which means to say that not all museums have the same 
uh, kinds of resources to keep their activities going. Not all museums have the same kind of centrality for the national states, and not all museums are equally recognized by international organizations such as ICOM and UNESCO. So that's a matter for us to approach that is both theoretical, epistemic, but also political. And that's a matter that's very um, important for us in ICOFOM and important for me, and I would like to approach here briefly in this introduction. Uh, for that matter, I would like to, to talk a little bit about a special project that ICOFOM has been developing since 2019, uh, which is the project that we have been entitling Museums, Community Action and Decolonization, which in a way I think has a lot to do with uh, some of the topics that have been discussed here, but most importantly, um, a lot to do with the goal of your uh, Babel Tower, because really ICOFOM has been dealing with this Babel Tower since the beginning when we have different actors, different uh, theorists with uh, very diverse backgrounds and geographical uh, origins discussing museology in their own terms. So it, it has really been a Babel Tower for, for, for ICOFOM since the 70s. And now when we approach these topics from different angles and trying to find a common ground between theorists from different contexts, especially in an international level, we have to deal with an issue that is central to all of us right now and very important, especially uh, this year and last year when we have seen so many claims for social movement and community action challenging the museum practices, uh, which is decolonization. So ICOFOM has uh, really initiated this process of not only trying to define what decolonization is for museums, but really try to understand what do the different trends and the different people involved in ICOM and in ICOFOM really mean by decolonization. And what we have uh, discovered so far is that really there is not one kind of decolonization. There, there is not one single approach to decolonization, and we can definitely not universalize decolonization as a, an instrumental process or as a normative um, rule for museums uh, to establish specific practical or decolonial practical matters for museums today. Decolonization must really be uh, seen in, as a in a case-to-case -case basis. So um, this, in, in, with this in mind, this project aims to foster debates and develop reflexive basis for museum practice, which relate to the claims and actions of communities seeking greater agency through the forum of the museum. In this sense, here specifically, we are understanding community action as um, minority groups moving towards a common purpose or social cause that can lead to the decolonization of the museum and of the academic discipline that studies it and put it into practice uh, that we, all, we call museology. This project, uh, just to give you some context, it brings together reflections that are in direct dialogue uh, with a will to decolonize museums and museology uh, since at least the round table of Santiago of Chile in 1972, almost 50 years ago. And in this sense, these debates that we have uh, initiated in 2019, they will originate a series of publications. We already have two volumes that have been published and we are working on the third volume that will culminate with the historical celebrations of the anniversary of the round table uh, in 2022, next year. So uh, we have had now uh, several symposiums. Last week we had our last one, uh, organized in Scotland by Dr. Karen Brown, which was a very rich symposium on decolonizing the curriculum. And next week, and this week, actually on the 28th, we have uh, another symposium with the participants, the, the, the keynote speech by Walter Minol that has been organized by ICOFOM LAC. Uh, in this series of symposiums, we have the participations of countries such as Argentina, Brazil, Barbados, Mexico, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Canada, the US, France, Spain, the UK, Taiwan, New Zealand, India, South Africa, among some others. So it's really a very international project that really envisaged to challenge museology and what, it, what does it have uh, as a transnational discipline. So in that way, 
the reason why I'm bringing is, is that I see many similarities with your project and maybe I, I would like to uh, maybe dialogue with you more and exchange more um, from what you're going to develop now because we are also in that phase where we are trying to gather the material produced. But this project really uh, led me to think that we are now in a crucial moment of museology, like some of other moments we had before, just like in the 70s, in the context of the Roundtable of Santiago, where the Roundtable really expressed a lot of uh, processes of change that were going in museums and societies by that time. And now, 50 years after that, we are somehow facing different challenges, but also different kinds of approach to change museums in the world uh, as platform for uh, different kinds of uh, notions such as decolonization, social justice, human rights, um, a lot of the terms that have been evoked throughout the presentations in your Babel Tower project. And so I would like to, one of the things that I would like to say is how can we approach that in museological terms, not just to see that museums are changing, but try to understand this change in a critical and reflexive way. We have seen, we have heard in in Yuzi presentation today from from the with the, the, a summary of all the, the presentations. Um, we have heard several terms such as eco museums, eco museology, new museology, social museology, museology of human rights, and I would like to say what uh, insurgent museology in the concept that Manuelina is using. And so my question would be, what, how can we? start establishing a common ground from these different kinds of museology and these different kinds of trends that we have been inventing and appropriating ourselves to talk about museums. Because sometimes we are talking about different things, but sometimes we are talking about common things and things that we have in common and things that we have to dialogue. So that's, that's why I think it's important to go beyond the labels into a more active role and a, a, a more active methodology to approach to approach these changes that are happening in the museum field. That's the only way we can move forward as a museology disciplinary, as with a disciplinary notion of museology. But that's also the only way we can move forward with a common notion of museum. I mean, what do we mean by museum between ourselves? I'm not talking about the icon museum definition here. This is another matter. This is a normative matter. But in terms of developing a concept that is useful for us, what do we mean by museums? And how should we, should we be asking this question? Should we be really basing ourselves in our own knowledge of what museums are? Or should we be looking outside from academia and outside of even icon to realize that what museums are and how we can define it, it's not more, it's no, it's no longer up to us. Because that's, for me, probably uh, the biggest change that we have today. It's not, again, we're not again talking about decolonization just to talk about, we're not again talking about human rights and social justice, but we are actually seeing a change, that it's a change of perspective. If in the 70s and in the 80s it were it was the specialists and the museum directors and even the, the director of ICOM organization and, and changes in museums and the idea of a social museum, an integral museum that was proposed in Santiago. Now, these concepts do not belong to the scientists or to the authorized knowledge produced within ICOM. I think the biggest difference that we have here is that these concepts belong to the communities. These concepts, even the concept of eco museum that you, he you here have evoked, it's no longer defined by the specialists, but it's really adapted and transformed constantly through the experiences of local people. And I think that's the methodological turn that we need to face because we no longer have the power. We have to share this power and we have to recognize that who defines museum is no longer the, the specialists, but that we really need to look to the practices. We really have to see, to, to have a sensibility to approach these issues from the experiences of the people. And in that sense, field work and a more anthropological approach is absolutely urgent for museum practitioners uh, so that we can not only find a common ground, but really allow other voices to be also perceived as authorized voices in the museum field. So I think that is probably one of the things that I would like to highlight here today in terms of contributing to that debate and also from my own 
perspective and experience. As, as Manuelina knows very well, I am someone who have been working in academia, but since the beginning of my uh, museologist career, I have been working with community museums and I have learned a lot with community museums. And that's why, I mean, I'm constantly referring to more experimental ways to see museums and experimental way to see museology, because I don't think we are uh, no longer allowed to make decisions and to create concepts and to propose methodologies without seeing how this uh, platform, this social device, the museum, is being used and put into practice by the minority groups and the communities that have been excluded from it in the past. I think that's the main message that I would like to start this discussion by stating for you, and I'm really eager to participate and to listen to the questions if there are any. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alberto and Bruno, for, for your inspiring words. Uh, we would like to keep it as a dialogue. So uh, for the people who are here and listening, please, if you have questions, uh, just uh, um, raise your hand, write in the chat for who can write in the chat, and we will collect them. Before um, opening uh, um, to the wide discussion, I would like now to um, uh, listen to other two to brief contribution from people that work on the ground, as you were saying, the, the, uh, the active people that are practically carrying out experiences. One of them is a university museum. Um, I would like to invite Cetina Santagati now to uh, present, introduce the experience of the Museum of Representation from the Department of Civil Engineering and Architecture at the University of Catania. And uh, I would ask her to briefly introduce herself and what they do. and. Uh, the reason why we have uh, we want you to listen also to these two other experiences is still to stress out some concepts. Uh, in this case, we we are uh, keeping uh, stressing the concept of participation and uh, engagement. They have done work related with students' engagement into the daily life of this museum. And uh, I would like to ask um, Cettina to say how this work of engagement uh, has been useful in terms of improving the sense of belonging toward the museums from the students and how could this be open um, uh, to a broader public uh, for creating the same sense of belonging uh, in a city like the city of Catania where this discussion uh, in South Italy are still um, th there are some experiences that, that are interesting but it's this type of discussion has to be pushed a bit. So, Cettina, please, uh, uh, the floor is yours, and we uh, let's use these cases also to um, try to reflect a bit more uh, about terms such as participation, engagement, etc. Cettina. Hello, I already shared my screen. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I can start the. Okay, yes. Uh, so, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, thank Giussi Pappalardo and uh, Manuelina Duarte uh, for having invited us uh, to contribute to the Bubble Tower uh, webinars. And also, um, I bring you salutation of uh, Prof. Maria Teresa Galizia, um, the museum uh, coordinator. Uh, as already said, uh, uh, Giussi, I'm uh, Cettina Santagati, I'm assistant professor at the uh, uh, University of Catania, the Department of Civil Engineering and Architecture, uh, and I'm member of ICOM Italy uh, Digital Technologies Commission. Uh, within uh, uh, the Museo della Rappresentazione, Museum of Representation, but as we, uh, as we call it, Mura, I'm a member of the scientific committee and I hid one of the two laboratories, the one of digital surveying, representation and reconstruction. The museum is part of the university museum system, a coordinated network of 22 structures born in the uh, 2000. Um, 15, with the aim uh, to responsible uh, for classifying, uh, safeguarding and enhancing the cultural and uh, scientific heritage of Catania University 
um, heritage to preserve, protect, enhance and make available to the scientific and the wider community uh, all the uh, heritage instruments and the results obtained uh, um, uh, through uh, the research, the teaching and the dissemination activities. The museum established in 1997 within the framework of Catania Lecce project under the coordination of Prof. Piera Busacca. For this purpose, a historical building uh, belonging to the University of Catania has been restored to be used as a museum. The building, uh, Villa Zingaritetto, has been designed in 1930 by uh, Paolo Lanzerotti, a well-known architect in Catania. Uh, the villa has been donated to the university by its owner, the lower uh, Paolo Zingaritetto. Here you can see uh, the noble floor of the museum, uh, the dining room, the main hall and the studio of the, uh, of the lower. Uh, the museum houses the collection of projects uh, of the architect Francesco Figuera, the iconographic collection of engravings and prints uh, dated, back, um, dated between uh, um, 17 and uh, mid 18 uh, as, um, concerning ancient Renaissance and Baroque architecture, uh, so uh, Piranesi, Savorelli, Camporesi, Panini and De Rossi, and a collection of drawings of the departments uh, that document uh, the uh, teaching activities uh, of the drawing courses from uh, uh, um, 18, uh, the, the, um, the end of the 19th century. After being closed for 10 years, in October 2016, it was reassigned to our department uh, and uh, um, it was uh, appointed a new scientific director, uh, Prof. Maria Teresa Galizia, and a scientific uh, committee with different uh, disciplines and competences, such as drawing, uh, um, design, uh, history of architecture, urbanism, uh, um, restoration. Uh, in the restarting of the museum machine, uh, we, uh, we had several uh, um, questions uh, and uh, uh, that uh, um, the, there were a lot of questions that raised uh, on the mission of the university museums uh, on how to change the way that uh, our uh, um, uh, documental heritage has been uh, communicated, how to link together the research, the didactics uh, uh, with the uh, surrounding territory and uh, how to um, how to involve the potential users, how to involve our students, how to involve the wider public, and also um, how to uh, uh, approach also uh, um, parts of the uh, potential public, such as uh, uh, the children and the um, high school students. Uh, so, uh, the project embraces the ICOM definition of a museum, extending it uh, uh, to the museum, uh, to the university three emissions, uh, and is taking shape through uh, successive uh, experience and new practices that aim to uh, combine manual creativity, technological innovation, interaction with and between the public and the museum space. Also, uh, we consider uh, transversal. Uh, transversality and the decontamination of skills. Uh, the aim is to experiment new ways of communication languages, um, educating, accompanying and socializing. Furthermore, we envision our museum uh, participatory, industrious and collaborative. Um, we see our museum as a laboratory of new practices uh, of narration and understanding of the, um, of the heritage. Uh, so uh, the first step was to establish two labs. The laboratory are open to the internal research and teaching experience and at the same time they constitute a center of experimentation open to dialogue of common interest with external bodies such as schools, municipalities, okay. uh, province, superintendents, etc. 
uh, with different fields of uh, application. Uh, the aim is to develop new solutions, experience and skills that allow museum users and stakeholders to uh, enter uh, in a relation with uh, in a relationship of co-creation of museum content and planning. Our activities have foreseen uh, an active involvement of students. Uh, as we say, uh, seeing through their eyes uh, um, and uh, uh, to find the new approaches. Uh, this uh, this uh, approach brought uh, to, uh, uh, um, to the development of a sense of belonging uh, of our students to uh, the museum places. Also, we embraced the, the Faro Convention principles for a broader understanding of cultural heritage and its relationships to communities and society. Indeed, uh, objects and places are important because of the meaning and the uses that people attach to them and the values they represent. Here you can see an overview of the didactic activities linked to our courses. For instance, the course of architectural drawing and laboratory, where the students were invited to study the architecture of the uh, 20s uh, of the previous century, including uh, the villa ha that houses uh, the museum, and they were invited to design the exhibition of their work, as you can see in the images. Uh, then uh, uh, we have also other activities, uh, for example, the students of the architectural restoration laboratory course uh, who studied the constructive and technological apparatus, uh, as well as the status of conservation of the villa. Or the students of architectural composition and laboratory who spent their time in the mural laboratories for producing their maquette. Another relevant activity that involved students is related to the internships we run for the restarting of the museum. As I previously said, 23 students were involved in all the steps of the museum exhibition um, preparation. So uh, they uh, contribute uh, was very important because uh, they helped us uh, uh, to co-create our contents. For instance, one of our interns created a 3D model of an unbuilt house designed by Fikera with the purpose to let our visitor experience, uh, even if only virtually, the designed space. Also, uh, another activity in creating contents for the museum is uh, the activity related with the uh, thesis that our students uh, uh, prepare. Uh, for example, uh, we have this project uh, uh, that is aimed at the announcement of the Piranesi collection. Here, uh, Federica Grasso created a virtual sensor labyrinth inspired to the carceri di invenzione, and she created a physical maquette and a virtual environment to be um, experienced in a virtual reality. Then, uh, another experience is the one of uh, uh, Melita Rizzo. Uh, she, uh, um, uh, she made the uh, virtual reconstruction of the Cine Teatro Olimpia, uh, which was designed in 1913 by Francesco Fighera, and nowadays is uh, the seat of one of the McDonald's restaurants. Together with the contents, uh, also the container has been object of studies, uh, which were oriented to the preservation of historical building and the collection, as we can see in the thesis of uh, Federico La Russa. In parallel with our courses, we have carried out several education projects without, with uh, high school, uh, uh, with the aim to involve a young generation in cultural content, uh, uh, co-creation and communication activities. Also, we have organized several training workshops for our students uh, and uh, we have participated uh, into a lot of events uh, open to the public and our interns, students, PhD students, uh, have been uh, actively involved in, the, uh, um, in these activities, as you can see in these uh, uh, images. Uh, as well as uh, um, our students uh, has been uh, involved uh, both in the um, temporary exhibitions and in the scientific events we have, um, we have organized. 
Um, uh, I think I made uh, a general overview of our work at uh, the museum. Uh, um, I don't know if I was uh, too long. Uh, if we have time, I would like to share with you a little video that uh, we uh, created. Um, uh, we call it uh, the trailer of the museum. Uh, since we uh, created it uh, at the starting, when we were uh, uh, working for the reopening of the museum, and you can see how our students uh, were uh, actively um, participated to our uh, um, uh, to our teams. Yes, Juicy, so may I? Let's, um, can you do that later? Because we are kind of running late. Uh, uh, okay, 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 okay. Sorry. I don't know if uh, in, uh, I think that uh, um, um, across the presentation, I have already answered uh, to your uh, questions. But okay. if you want that I point out better something, let us, uh, let us know. I think yes. that as regards the sense of belonging, uh, I mean, uh, you see these pictures, uh, this image is very represented, uh, representative because uh, here we are uh, all together, uh, students, uh, uh, professors, uh, and uh, uh, we, we acted all together. We spent a lot of time uh, uh, together uh, for the museum and uh, this uh, uh, created a really uh, strong engagement and a sense of belonging um for the okay. students yes okay. uh, yes yes you uh you said that and uh, thank you for this sorry for uh uh airing you up but we will we can discuss that later during the debate i just want to give the floor now to the second brief presentation which is uh from Ansa and valentina from the simeto river eco museum so that we do have the two types of uh, uh experiences over there the museum that case of museum of representation from the university of catania and now an eco museal process in the cimento river valley um Enza and valentina can you introduce yourself and then Enza will uh, give details yes uh, good afternoon everyone and thank you for this opportunity uh, you will excuse my english i will be brief I am Valentina del Campo and I teach art uh, history. Um, I approached the, the path of the Simeto Eco Museum uh, also to follow up on my studies and my thesis in museology, uh, in which I dedicated myself um, above all uh, to the aspects concerning uh, the education of the cultural heritage. Uh, in fact, my desire uh, would be to create uh, museum didactics uh, laboratories um, along the um, Eco Museum project. Um, thank you for your attention, and I now pass the word to Enza Bonanno, who will explain in more detail uh, the history of the Presidio Participativo and the Eco Museum project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Valentina. I try to uh, share my screen. Just a moment, please. OK. Uh, could you see? Yes. Yes. OK, thank, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure for me uh, to take part in this important webinar. Uh, I thank all, especially Giuseppe Pappalardo. Um, and uh, um, I try to uh, present uh, uh, the history of Presidium and the process toward the uh, two eco museums uh, uh, of the Cimento River Valley. Um, I'm Vincenzo Bonanno. Uh, I'm a management engineer, but uh, today I will talk to you uh, as an activist of the participatory presidium and a member of the Museum coordination team. Uh, 
Presidium is a, a community based organization consists of uh, dozens of associations, local associations and uh, individual uh, citizens of Simeto River Valley. Uh, the community engagement uh, is uh, uh, the central point uh, in the history uh, of the participatory presidium and uh, uh, it's allowed uh, to reach uh, uh, several results uh, that now I'm telling uh, you briefly. Also, uh, social inclusion and social, uh, social ecological uh, justice uh, uh, have uh, ever been implicitly uh, among the main uh, objectives uh, of uh, the presidium. In fact, uh, uh, the participatory presidium uh, aims to uh, promote uh, a sustainable development action plan, able to protect uh, uh, proactively the Simeto Valley, uh, including both uh, um, ecosystem, its ecosystem and uh, also the community. The uh, community engagement starts uh, in uh, 2002 uh, when uh, the community of the Smith uh, River Valley organized a social mobilization uh, to contrast uh, the Sicilian region decision to uh, build a mega incinerator, one of the five mega incinerators provided for uh, in uh, the Sicilian waste uh, management plan. plan. Uh, the mobilization was inspired by uh, social ecological uh, and environmental justice principles and uh, by a different way to manage waste and the business around it. Uh, the protest was uh, successful and uh, uh, in fact the mega incinerator uh, wasn't built. Uh, but uh, uh, the main fact, the main event about uh, this protest was that uh, uh, the local community uh, after this protest uh, decided to organize it itself uh, in order to move uh, from uh, protest action to uh, proposition. In fact, uh, this, uh, um, from protest action to proposition uh, became uh, our motto. Uh, since then, individual citizens and uh, local association, together with uh, uh, some researchers from uh, University of Catania, also uh, Giuseppe Pappalardo, uh, start to organize uh, themselves and uh, to implement action for uh, uh, sustainable de development. For this reason, uh, we can say probably that uh, the social ecological uh, uh, justice uh, is, a, 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 is a cornerstone of the presidium. So uh, in order to explain uh, the effectiveness of the community engagement uh, put in place by the presidium, uh, um, let me uh, mention some results uh, uh, that uh, became uh, that uh, came from uh, this uh, community engagement. Uh, for example, from uh, 2009 to uh, 2010, uh, the community in partnership with uh, the university had implemented the, the first community mapping experiment in order to focus uh, the proposition, uh, not also on the issues uh, of the territory, but uh, mainly in uh, shared values, uh, memories, uh, identities, uh, uh, as a basis, as a first step, uh, uh, to, uh, to draw up a strategical local plan. In uh, 2015, the Cimento River Agreement has been signed between uh, 10 municipalities uh, along the middle stretch of the river, uh, the University of Catania and the Participatory Presidium. Uh, several projects uh, have been funded thanks uh, uh, to this synergy, the synergy and the network uh, uh, that the agreement created. Uh, one of these uh, uh, important projects uh, is uh, the European Life Projects, uh, related to adaptation uh, uh, of the territory and the community to climate change. But uh, another important uh, project is uh, uh, the uh, National Strategy for uh, Inner uh, Areas, uh, also called SNAI, a uh, ministerial program in the framework of Italian uh, territorial uh, cohesion po policy. Uh, the valley uh, has been selected as an experimental area uh, of national significance for uh, an important point, uh, um, the uh, participatory process put in place by the community, uh, together with uh, university and uh, municipalities. Uh, our community engagement uh, uh, develops spontaneously in the Q-Museum process. Uh, in fact, uh, during uh, uh, 2019 partners meetings, uh, 
uh, the community itself expressed the desire to work uh, um, at the Ethnic Museum of the Cimeto. Uh, in fact, from uh, January uh, 2020, uh, during the lockdown period uh, caused by COVID, the community activists uh, have been uh, working at the museum together with uh, uh, students uh, and scholars of the University of Catania. Uh, the working group uh, had worked online for six months, uh, during which uh, are done online meetings, uh, online mapping and the study of the best practices in this field. After this important period of mutual learning between uh, the students and the community, uh, the first, uh, finally, the first community meeting in presence uh, um, has been done. The output of this meeting uh, that called the Peronico Museo uh, de Cimeto um, was a general program uh, for a pilot year of experimentation. In the framework of this uh, uh, general program, uh, we, uh, have identified, uh, we have identified four pilot projects, uh, which are uh, Museum Go to Farm, Go to the Farm, uh, New Chain of Value, and uh, The River Exist, um, dedicated to the memory of uh, our friend and ecologist Luigi Puglisi. And uh, an example of social inclusion experimental activity uh, is the pilot project named uh, Inclusive uh, Landscapes. Inclusive land landscapes uh, um, want to include and involve local people that normally uh, are excluded from the democratic participation and from uh, the policy uh, decision making in the process of recognition and re-evaluation re of local material and immaterial heritage of the Cimeto Valley. Uh, in, the in the framework, uh, um, especially of the uh, inclusive landscape, uh, um, a project called uh, Amici um, has been designed and uh, uh, it is now in the um, implementation phase. In this project, three um, young people coming from a juvenile correction facility from Catania are involving in an educational program to uh, rediscover community values, uh, heritage, and include, and include them in uh, the Q-Museum community process. Uh, these important results uh, prove that uh, uh, the social inclusion in a main is a main team of, uh, um, for uh, our community and uh, that uh, the approach uh, to uh, participation should incorporate uh, instance of social inclusion. Uh, other important inputs in this, uh, in this month uh, um, are uh, coming from community about this field, uh, such as the uh, activity for the inclusion of individuals with uh, disabilities uh, and the team of illegal hiring. So uh, from, uh, um, sorry, from September, from September uh, 2020, more than 80 people uh, from community have been uh, involved in these uh, uh, in these four pilot projects, uh, and uh, other important outcomes uh, uh, have been reached. For example, in uh, January, uh, in February uh, 2021, um, we. Um, uh, we have submitted the application to obtain uh, the um, Ecu Museum acknowledgement by Sicilian uh, Parliament. So, um, in conclusion, we see uh, Ecu Museum as uh, a community-based process to promote uh, a given value to local material and immaterial heritage by means uh, participatory process and uh, so by means of the involvement of the Cimeto Valley community. Uh, that becomes the like museum's curators. Moreover, uh, the museum's pact uh, will be formalized uh, inside the Cimeto River Agreement uh, with the uh, municipality and university of Catania and will make the main part uh, of the sustainable activity program for the uh, participatory presidium 2.0. Uh, from now, uh, we will write uh, together this story uh, by means of continuous improvement uh, and a circular process that includes uh, dreaming, planning, implementing and celebrating. Uh, furthermore, I want to cite uh, you a Danilo Dolci's quote uh, that uh, inspires us uh, and uh, our activities. L'importanza della conoscenza che nasce da un incrocio dei saperi, dal, dal potersi scambiare saperi l'un l'altro, dal dialogo continuo, dalla cooperazione nei dibattiti, dalla possibilità di concepire insieme le idee, le soluzioni, unirsi per essere più forti, cittadini attivi con una piena consapevolezza del ruolo che si ha nella società. 
La conoscenza e la partecipazione attiva sono la chiave per una società migliore. So, in conclusion, if you want, uh, you can follow us, uh, our activities and projects uh, um, on uh, Facebook, Twitter and uh, Instagram uh, tools and in our websites uh, that contains a dedicated uh, section about uh, Eco Museum. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention and uh, if uh, there are uh, um, uh, questions, uh, I am here to, to try to, to answer. Thank you, um, Valentina and Anza, for uh, this nice presentation also. And uh, let me share with the people here that for us, Danilo Dolci has been an inspiring activist uh, in, uh, and we sometimes find some connections between what he has um, uh, experienced as a maieutic approach to education, uh, which has contact points with the same approach of Paolo Freire. Uh, sometimes they've been put together in, uh, in, uh, in discussions related with the uh, um, education of um, the liberation of the oppressed. So that's for you know a more international audience just to explain who Danilo Dolci be, be, and for us it's very important because he has done a lot of work in Western Sicily, uh, working in the Belice Valley uh, with farmers and uh, and so we, we really uh, care about his words and his lessons and that's why that quote is very important for us and thank you uh, Ensa for having shared um, Danilo Dolci's thought with all of us. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm sorry for, um, we're probably running a bit late, uh, but we still have time for question discussion. And uh, so if uh, students or uh, um, other museum people here want to share their thoughts, their uh, um, questions, uh, reflection on what has been said, uh, please don't hesitate, raise your hands or uh, um, with Teams button or you, you can open your camera and your microphone right in the chat, uh, don't hesitate, uh, we really want to keep this uh, uh, dialogical and I'm sure that there are uh, many things to be discussed now, so uh, just uh, who wants to start just uh, uh, I would be happy to hear from students, for example, or um, other people that I know have followed us during the um, past webinars and want to share a comment or a question. I think the students uh, from Liège prepared something or the students from Montreal I can ask, uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, Ansa to stop sharing the screen, so that if, I don't know if they have something to share or not. Thank you, Ansa. Uh, Megan, je ne sais pas, uh, I don't know if uh, Ocean had something collected between the students to share and she has problems with microphone. Um, I don't think Ocean uh, had, some, had prepared something, but I think that uh, Analu from Quebec had made some notes when we were talking about the definition of museum. So maybe she can explain what we, we talked about this, uh, this other day. I don't know if she is still there. Hello. Yes. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, everyone. Yes, I'm here. Uh, well, we uh, had a meeting between the students from um, University of Liège and the University of Quebec in Montreal, and we actually shared some opinions and thoughts about the new definition of um, uh, ICOM. So we. Uh, we talked about the um, the the challenges that the definitions the definition um, 
suggested uh, as example uh, is it really uh, possible to apply this definition concerning uh, the museum's uh, uh, problems that they are facing for example the um, the diversity of the missions is it really possible to add some new uh, missions to uh, to museums and uh, we actually so that um, we were sharing the same opinions, even if we are uh, staying in the different uh, continents. So that was the main, um, the main uh, thing that we can uh, point. I don't know if uh, the other students have anything to add, but um, yes. And we also talked uh, during another meeting uh, about the Museum of Civilization in Quebec and uh, the Museum of Anthropology in Liège. And uh, we point out that there is maybe one concept that we can uh, um, we can uh, uh, deeper um, um, think about. It was the pop museology, thinking about uh, museology as a popular uh, concept. So maybe uh, in another time we can uh, discuss about this uh, furthermore. But uh, that was the main um, the main ideas. So uh, I will add something to to this, and then uh, uh, maybe Garlandine and, and Roland can comment uh, both. Uh, questions together because we just had the result of the um, uh, consultation in Brazil about the, the definition and uh, I don't know if I could maybe share here because I have only in, in Portuguese but uh, you will recognize some words and uh, you see especially that uh, we don't find uh, words like uh, collections or one minute uh, collections or um, or past here you 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 see more the the words like anti-racist or um, well-being or well 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 living in fact or research heritage inclusive human rights, democratic, uh, transforming future. So we don't have here conservation or collections or the, the um, words that maybe are more expected sometimes. And I would like uh, Garlandine and, and Bruno uh, comment the, the challenge to, to put these different ways uh, of thinking about museums together in a new, new definition. Please, Brunos, you start. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Manuelina, for sharing this. I think that's uh, very provoking to the discussion. And, and thank you for the students to be debating this and raising questions. This is actually very helpful to us. Um, I, have, I have closely participated in the debate in ICON Brazil. They have done an outstanding work. They involved so many people and they have really created a network with specialists, but also community people involved in, in community-based museums. Um, and it was really a successful debate. Uh, but uh, just so you know, uh, from last week, we have received around 89. The last time I checked with the secretariat, it was 89 responses from committees which is a huge number for ICOM. And, and we are really happy to have this amazing participation from the representatives of ICOM. I truly think that this is a historical moment for ICOM and for the museum definition, and one that will give really interesting results, not only uh, by proposing a new possible definition, but also for this incredible dialogue that has been raised since we started this methodology. So we couldn't be happier with this, but of course, as Manuelina presented these results from Brazil, and I have seen many other results 
from different committees, even ICOFON, because we have submitted our own results. Um, the, it's very interesting to, to realize now that there are different approaches and different key concepts being proposed, but our challenge from now on will really be to find the common ground. What, it, what does all the ICOM committees have in common and want to see in a museum definition? I think that's the most interesting part of the job and that's the most interesting part of this entire process of making a definition based on consultations to the committees. And I don't, I, at least since I'm, I'm, in, I'm an ICO member, I have never seen this kind of engagement. I have never seen this kind of close participation from committees. And also um, to see that people are really moved by this discussion, it really means how important it is to have an inclusive and open museum definition that can be applied to as many contexts as possible. So this is really only the initial phase because we are now collecting the key concepts and then we are going to still have two or three different moments of possible consultations to, to the committees yet before really finding a proposal of a definition. Um, but it's very important to see how diverse it is right now and to see also that our path should be one of really starting a dialogue that can reach one uh, text and one uh, possibly a short definition that can really summarize all these values and all these notions that have been um, anticipated by the committees. I'm very eager to that. I cannot give you answers because actually we have an external team of analysts who will uh, who are completely neutral to the ICON process and who will be working on the data received because as you can see 89 committees if you multiply this by 20 key concepts it's a huge amount of data so evidently us as the members of ICON Define could not deal with it so we need to hire some specialists to do the job and I'm very happy that we have this qualified team to work with us and I can't wait to present you the results but for now we're only initiating so I cannot say more than that but I mean the results are, are already very much positive considering the amount of people who responded to our consultation. Yes, I completely agree with Bruno, which is not surprising. We are, we are always on the same wavelength. However, he has got much more information uh, of what is going on. But however, I can confirm from other friends, from other colleagues, from other national committees, just they contacted me and explained what is going on. And as a matter of fact, I'm, I am very happy that... Uh, this consultation is strengthening the relationship between our committees, national and international, with the, with the colleagues, with the, the, not only the member of ICOM, but the, the colleagues. It's, uh, there is a really, each, uh, each committee is uh, collecting so many contributions. That's very important. Uh, it's more than the single contribution coming from each member is the fact that the, our committees, our ICON committees are collecting so many information, are promoting so much discussion, are trying to, to find the common ground inside their national or international committees. That for me is great. Uh, I really, I really think that it's not important single contribution. It's important that there is this dialogue, this common contribution, and that they are, our committees are going to collect it. And then that's a great responsibility of ICOM Define, of the executive board, of our general assembly to collect everything and try to find a common ground. Let me say a few words about the common ground. Really, that's what concerning me, concern me much, really, really. A professional association, a professional community can have a present and a future only if they are able to enhance common histories, common memories, if they share a tradition of ideas, if they share cultural and ethical references, if they can be able to find what unifies them. There is so much diversity, of course, but we cannot, as a professional association, we cannot just say, oh, there are different opinions, that's all. No, we were to try to put them together uh, to find out what unified us, 
we have so many challenges now. We cannot face the, 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 the challenges of the, of the pandemic, but also the challenges of the 21st century alone, just as a single director, as a single committee, but try to find what unify us. That's the real, the real challenge. And, uh, and I have to add, well, please don't put too much responsibility upon uh, the museum definition. What uh, unify, we have different uh, identity documents. We have the code of ethics for museums. We have, uh, we produce documents, vision documents, documents about the missions and so on. We cannot put everything in a definition. We should be, it's, it cannot be a document, uh, 200, 300 pages. It's just a definition. So it really has to collect the common ground, what unifies us, and then everything can be uh, more, more uh, discussed, more uh, presented in so many documents. But here, the real challenge is, uh, as Bruno said, it, uh, he and Laura has got a great responsibility to build up a path to unity and to build up a path to someone that could be accepted, not by everyone. Each, uh, every 49,000 um, members, but which can be seen from all over the community that something is useful because they can recognize themselves, at least part of their experience in this definition. And then, the different experience have so many, so many ways to to express themselves. If we are able, and this is a situation to have a real cultural dialogue, so diversity, we, we cannot have a unity without diversity, and diversity without unity is worthless. Facing the great challenges that we have, so I I I know that. Uh, uh, appointing you and Laura and president, no, co-chairs of ICOM Define has given you great responsibilities, but I, I'm sure that uh, you, you're going to do a great job. And in the end, well, I'm optimistic that in the end we can find a museum definition that can be accepted by almost everyone. And then other discussion, other document, the revisions of Code of Ethics could answer to all so many other questions that are coming up from our so complex, so lively, so exciting community. Thank you. And with these uh, important words, I would say, let's close the bubble tower here. Uh, let's stop the recording as I don't see any um, comment or question or raise hand. So uh, thank you all. I'm uh, closing the recording and